Since its inception in 2009, BRICS, which is the leading group of emerging countries led by Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, have been mainly focused on one thing. But along the way, they have accomplished other things that could help them get to their main goal. Other things like surpassing the G7 nations in terms of GDP, other things like having over 40% of the world population, and other things like inviting six new countries to be members effective January 1st, 2024. The addition of these new members adds the ability for more strategic strategic alliances, regional balance, and have a stranglehold on the world's oil production. But these items are all secondary to their main focus of creating a second global financial system away from the developed nations, specifically the United States and its currency, the dollar. So in this video, let's talk about how BRICS is changing their financial landscape, what the pros and cons are for what they're doing, and if any of this can actually challenge the power of the dollar going forward. BRICS's brand new initiative, which might actually be their most impressive accomplished yet, is called BRICS Pay, and it's actually currently up and running. BRICS Pay is a payment system specifically designed to simplify economic cooperation between the BRICS countries. It achieves this through a blend of traditional payment mechanisms and new technologies like central bank digital currencies. These transactions are facilitated, ensuring the highest level of transparency and security by recording each transaction on a blockchain. In a rapidly evolving world where speed and efficiency are at the forefront, BRICS Pay could make cross-border transactions much more convenient for those involved. But historically, the global financial system has worked like this. Due to its long-standing status as the world reserve currency, the dollar has been used to settle cross-border transactions with. A common currency makes international trade so much more reliable when both sides know the value of a dependable currency. And it has been convenient at times for countries to settle transactions with the dollar since they've had to hold dollars for things like oil transactions, which historically have been made in dollars. But all that is changing, with BRICS expanding and now having six of the top 10 oil producers in the world, combined with the idea of BRICS focusing on local currencies in favor of the dollar, this methodology could be changing. This is where BRICS pay comes in. Let's talk about two practical applications and benefits of using it. The first is international trade. Currently, most banking transactions run through SWIFT, which is how global banks communicate with one another. When you're sending money from one person to another, as long as the two banks have accounts with each other, they would authenticate the payment request. If the banks don't have a relationship, the SWIFT message would be sent through intermediary banks, which have a presence in, you guessed it, the United States, which is why these countries are looking for alternatives. BRICS Pay isn't necessarily going to replace SWIFT, but it does give the BRICS countries more autonomy from the Western system. The second Second possible benefit to BRICS Pay is it should simplify cross-border transactions. BRICS Pay eliminates the need for intermediary currencies like the dollar, which will reduce transaction costs. And with the dollar being reduced, it paves the way for different currencies to be used for transactions like oil from Saudi Arabia and Iran, both now part of the BRICS block. So instead of, say, India buying Saudi Arabia's oil in dollars, the transaction can be made through BRICS Pay, completely cutting the dollar out of the transaction. While in theory, BRICS Pay should be able to help all countries in the BRICS network reach different corners of the world with more ease and for cheaper, there are some glaring issues though. While the five BRICS countries agree on becoming more autonomous from the West, specifically the United States, that's about all they can agree on. It's hard for five different countries to come to a consensus when there's five different interests and five different priorities. And with each country having their own regulations when it comes to financial systems and digital currencies, there could be challenges in creating unity with each other on the way to operate going forward. Additionally, BRICS Pay depends on the technological infrastructure of each of the BRICS countries. So disparities in technology adoption and connectivity may hinder its potential. This includes staying up to date with cybersecurity. So how exactly does this impact the dollar? Before we get into that, I make videos about world news impacting the dollar and the United States. So if you like topics like this and want to see more of them, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Like I mentioned, this technology is up and running and has been embraced by major banks, airlines, technology companies, and e-commerce companies all around the world. But it appears like the digital currency race is on. In the United States, the Federal Reserve appears to be mulling over a decision to create a central bank digital currency. This could give the dollar even more standing power as the world reserve currency and outpace BRICS pay globally as it continues to get more adoption. For better or for worse, BRICS is off and running with their new digital currency. Let me know down in the comments how you think it'll do. If you didn't know, BRICS has a central bank of their own. Find out how they are trying to speed up de-dollarization in this video here.